Imagine a web client well designed, fast, extensible, made entirely with all. That would be nice, right? Well, sadly, this is just a dream yet. We, don't, we, do, we do not live in that world. What, uh, what we have right now is the old web client and a dream. For now, working with OWL in Odoo is kind of awkward. It's more difficult than before because you need to know two systems. You need to be able to work with widgets and to work with components. So there is this additional complexity of working with two systems. And that's what this talk is about. My name is Jerry De Bonny. I'm a lead developer at Odoo and I'm working mostly on JavaScript projects. And for this talk, I will give you the best practice, in my, uh, in my opinion, on how to make uh, all code uh, inside an Odoo web client. So let's get started with a first piece of terminology. Uh, as you may know, Odoo, the Odoo web client was built with widget. This is the old imperative code. And the new future web client will be done with components. It's not over yet, but that's the, the word that we will use. I know that widget is an overused term. It, it's used in, in other situations, but uh, I will clarify when, uh, when it's, it's needed in this talk. So now that uh, we have uh, the terminology uh, clear, let's talk about uh, the web client, the current state of the web client in all. For now, it's an ongoing work. We released all last year, uh, and since then, since then all of our new JavaScript code was built with OWL. So that's what the, the diagram shows. Just part of the web client is made in, an in a new uh, component style, and the rest of the code is still in a legacy uh, code. Okay? And there are many challenges to, uh, to make uh, two systems cooperate properly. So we will uh, explore those challenges first in this talk, and then I will show you how to uh, solve them to work with OWL uh, in Odoo. Next year, it should be easier, and the year after that, uh, as soon as the web client is completely uh, refactored and made entirely with those new OWL components. But for now, you need to solve a few problems, a few issues. First one, assets management. As you know, uh, you have, you describe your template, your QWeb template inside XML files. Most of them, most of them static XML files. Now, those, those files are bundled together and sent, uh, to, uh, from the server to the, to your web client. And the web client now needs to know what to do with the, with these templates. Should, they, should the web client send those templates to the old widget renderer or to the new old QWeb engine? That's a good question. So how to make sure that we can send a template to the proper system? That's one of the, 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 those issues that we will, will encounter working, while working with OWL. Another one, and that's a pretty significant problem, is communication. We have two different systems of, uh, of communication between widgets and between components. They are not compatible, and you need to be able to communicate across boundaries because the situation will arise when you have a widget which contains a component, which contains another widget, for example, and so on. You have a boundaries that you need to cross. And across those boundaries, you need to properly react to those events coming up. And those events are even in diff made with different conventions and different styles. So the old, old system, all the widgets events, they bubble up the widget tree, those custom events. They are generated with a trigger up method. They are cooked with uh, the, those custom event handlers. And that's a convention. They use underscores to separate words. Now, uh, com uh, all components, they use the whole system, obviously, because uh, the idea is to unify those communication systems in OWL and to simply use native events that uh, bubble up the DOM tree. There are, those events are generated with trigger and simply uh, coked with those event listeners added by the T on QWeb directive. Also, they use dash as uh, to separate words. Those are business events. Now, what we need to be able to do to properly uh, integrate all inside uh, uh, Odoo, the Odoo web client is to have some nice way to uh, remap those events 
from uh, they go from let's say a custom event, then to uh, they, they should be converted into a DOM event, and then converted again into a custom event, and so on. That's a, a significant problem, and it's very important because those those events are the basis of communication. So your uh, field widgets will not work if those events are not properly uh, listened to. So that's one of those challenges that we will encounter. Another one, it may be kind of abstract, but it's really significant also, is the shift from the imperative paradigm, the imperative way of programming, to a declarative way of programming. And what it means in practice is that usually in, when you work with widgets, you create those widgets yourself. You coordinate them yourself. You update them yourself. You, you need to write that code to do that. And uh, on the other hand, uh, all components, they are instantiated by the framework. They are updated by the framework. They are modified by the framework. So when you, you have a, a widget inside a component, how do you create it? And the other question arises as well. When you have a component inside a widget, how should it be created? Those are significant issues. Uh, another big one is life cycle remapping across boundaries. So, uh, uh, widgets have two callbacks which are really important and which need to be plumbed manually. Those uh, are unattached callback and undetached callback. Those uh, functions are used to, uh, uh, to notify a widget that it's available in the DOM, that it can start doing uh, its DOM specific logic, such as adding event listener or removing them. Those are the most um, significant use cases. Uh, and you need to, to remap them yourself. So that's, that was a, a, a missing feature of the, the old widget system, and we needed to do it manually to compensate. Now, the new OWL framework, on the other hand, uh, has built in uh, those features. Uh, those are named mounted and will unmount. Now, the problem when you have mix a null component inside a uh, widget or the other way around is that you need to make sure that whenever the unattached callback uh, method is called, you need to make sure that it will call then in the proper order the, the component mounted method. And the same for the undetached callback. So that's another problem. And if you don't do it, that will be, uh, that will mean that all will not be notified that a specific component is available in the DOM. So you will probably not see anything. It will just not work. So that's one problem. Uh, let's talk now about the JavaScript code style. So that's the first point that I want to make, is that um, the way Odoo manages its uh, assets, its web assets, is to, uh, I'm talking about JavaScript code uh, in particular, is to uh, minify them, bundle them, and then send them to the server, to the web client as is. So your code will be executed almost the, the, the same code as the one you, you write, which is, which is nice because you don't have any translation uh, going on, but it, it may be a problem if you use a feature that is not available in some specific web browser. For example, a very common problem is the static class field key that uh, you can see on the top right of your screen. Those static class uh, uh, fields, they do not work uh, uh, in all browsers. Some browsers do not support those, which uh, means that you should not use it, uh, them uh, in, in, when you write all code for the Odoo web client. What you should do instead is having your static field the old way, which is quite simple actually. It's just writing on the, um, uh, on, the, on, the, on the class itself. You can add properties to the class itself and they will work uh, with the, within uh, the Odoo uh, evaluation system. So that, that's the way it works. I think it's not as nice as doing it uh, uh, like it's uh, on the top, uh, top right, because uh, the way uh, using static class field allow you to uh, describe your template on, on top of your component. And it, it, it's a little bit nicer, but in Odoo, you should not use that. Another problem that you should not do is using inline template in your whole code. The problem with that is that, well, it, it, would, it will work, but then your template will not be translated and will not be extensible. You cannot uh, apply XPath to your template. And on that topic, I think I should take a minute to, to tell you, to let you know that uh, now static templates can be uh, modified by XPath. It was not the case uh, for, the, for the previous versions, 
but uh, now it's uh, it's available and it works. So you, you should use that. Uh, this, um, uh, uh, you, you should uh, make sure that your templates are available in um, uh, in your uh, system as an XML file. Okay. Okay. Now let's solve the template problem. The, the, remember, I told you that a template should be dispatched to either the, uh, the old QWeb legacy system or to the new old QWeb rendering engine. And to do that, the, the solution is very simple. Just add an attribute all equal one or whatever. It does not matter. The, the point is that whenever uh, the web client will see that attribute, it will know that it should be used for the whole system. So remember, if your template does not show up in all, just make sure that you have properly applied this attribute. That's one problem. Uh, we'll talk about the, the, the other problems just a in a little bit. I want uh, to explain first, uh, because it's simpler, how to work with widgets in, uh, in, uh, in another sense, uh, in all. In, uh, widgets here, I'm talking about fill widgets, widgets which are uh, set up, configured with the widget attribute. Uh, the way it was done before was quite simple. You needed to, uh, to, to, to uh, uh, subclass the abstract field uh, widget, then you needed to register that widget into a field registry, and finally, you need to make sure you don't forget to add the widget key into your uh, template, into your Arch uh, template. Well, it works exactly the same way in the whole system because we made sure that it's um, that the views uh, proper, properly support that. So the way you need to do is instead of subclassing abstract field, you should subclass abstract field all. And then you need to register it in uh, web field registry all instead of web field registry. And finally, just like before, you need to, don't forget to add widget equal in the arch. Doing that uh, is really the same process as before. And uh, those views, form view, list view, and Kanban view, they are, they were modified to make sure that they can properly support those uh, two kind of widgets for now. But sadly, we did not uh, refactor the widget system again yet. We'll do that someday, but for now, the abstract field all is really a translation, uh, a one to one translation from the abstract field API. In the future, we will use the props to, uh, to configure uh, the widget. But for now, you need to make sure that you use the proper API. And to do that, I invite you to check the file, abstract field all itself, the source code, it's doc documented uh, ex specifically to explain how it should be used. Also, another thing that you should know as well is that Odoo has a, a spe special all environment which contains a lot of useful tools that you may need. For example, the underscore T translation function or uh, the, co the core bus uh, itself or additional services. That's very important and you should uh, try to use those services instead of importing them yourself. So it makes your code more robust. Okay, so as I told you, we have three kinds of boundaries that we need to cross. Components inside components, that's the, an obvious one, I'll just uh, deal with that now. And then the other, component inside widget, and widget inside a component. The first one is really interesting because now XPath works with static templates. So what you can do is simply uh, add your component inside uh, inside a template by an XPath, and then you just need to register the new all component as a subcomponent of the parent. It's much easier than before because you don't need to monkey patch the class and make it, make it, make sure it instantiates properly and coordinate properly the new sub widgets. Okay. So now it's simply, simply modifying the uh, template. That's, we moved a lot of logic this way from the JavaScript world to the template world and it's much better for that. Now, that was the easy case. The, the two last case that we need to deal with is a, a component inside the um, widget and the other way. And to do that, uh, as you, as, as I mentioned, there are significant problems and we, are, we, we can solve them, but it's really uh, manually, technically difficult. It's, it's intensive. You need to not forget a lot of detail. And to help with that, we, ex we have made some new helpers. We have three objects. We have a mixin and two components which are exported in this 
all compatibility uh, file, and th they are used to uh, solve this very problem to uh, to make sure that you can work from a component inside a widget on the other way around. I invite you again to read the source code for this uh, this file. It contains a lot of additional information on how these helpers should be used. So, in the first case, in the first case component inside a widget, you need to add uh, the uh, widget adapter mixing to the parent widget. And then you need to make sure that this parent, this, uh, parent widget instantiates not your component, but a component wrapper, which will make sure that all the translation is done. This is just an higher order component, which will not appear in the actual DOM. It will just disappear. Um, disappear. And the other way around, it's, very, it's, it's a little bit simpler. When you have a widget inside a component, you need to simply use a component adapter and properly configure it to instantiate your widget instead of you. So let's have a look at what it looks like. A uh, component inside a widget, you can, look, uh, uh, you can uh, for example, uh, check this client action. This is uh, the Hello World uh, client action. It's an empty client action that you want to make in all. Sadly, the OWL uh, framework, no, the Odoo web client, I mean, I meant, the Odoo web client still does not support uh, OWL components for client action. So you, you need to do the, the work yourself to uh, create a widget which will be the parent for your actual uh, client action. Okay. So the, let's do that. We, we import the component wrapper component and the widget adapter mixing. So that's done in the top, uh, top right. After that, we add uh, the widget adapter mixing to your client action. So, so this, this uh, client action will be an old school widget, but it will be equipped with the knowledge necessary to uh, interact with your uh, components properly in the, um, in the web client. And finally, you need to uh, create your new component wrapper uh, component, uh, component as a, a new root, a new all root uh, in the start method and return, uh, return it properly. Uh, with this code, this, uh, uh, the client action will properly wrap your all client action, which is the code that you want to develop and execute. And af after that, of course, you need to register it to the uh, action registry, just like usual. In the future, those client actions will be made in all completely, and the problem will not arise. But for now, that's the way it should be done. Uh, let's now discuss the last situation that we want to, uh, to solve, how to uh, put a widget inside a component. Uh, that's a very interesting situation because we, we want all to, to instantiate the widget and not yourself. And the key to do that, to do that is this component adapter component, uh, sorry, uh, which is configured with a component prop, that, that, like you can see in this um, source code example. And with that, uh, this uh, sub-component uh, will, uh, will know how to create your widget, and it may also be configured to, uh, to give it arguments for the constructor, for example, or it could be updated. Uh, more, more details are available in the source code of those uh, compatib compatibility helpers. Now, there you go. You have all those kind of situations uh, can be solved uh, with those adapters to make sure that your uh, new code properly behaves uh, in, inside the old context. Thank you for your attention. I hope that this was useful and that you, you, that you feel empowered to build new stuff with OWL and with Odoo. Thank you again. Thank you, Jerry. Hello again, Vincent. Thank you for being here. Hello again, and thank you, everyone. Um, so I don't mean that the Odoo widgets will become out of style and will not be supported at some point. That's uh, interesting. We actually discussed about that problem, obviously. Uh, for now, we have two systems co co coexisting together, which is more complicated. Uh, even if the new system is better, uh, it's, uh, the, the net result is more difficult for now. Mm -hmm. And our end goal is to remove the uh, legacy widgets. But what we discussed for now uh, is to create, at some point, a web legacy add-on, maybe, to, uh, to, 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 um, uh, with the, those old uh, widget style code uh, inside. So whenever you need the support for the, the old framework, you can still install it.
All right. So, yeah. so they will stay alive pretty much well, uh, until forever if we want. Uh, I can't predict the future, uh, but uh, I would guess that at least for version 15, uh, they will be uh, they, they will be alive. Yes. We want to. We know it's difficult to believe, but we want to uh, lower the cost of code migration, right? <laughs> yeah, indeed. For for us and for everyone else. Uh, that I guess that replies to the question I just see now popping on. Why didn't we remove the widget yet? Oh, I wish we we, we did it, uh, but we we still need to support the existing uh, code base, and it's not, it's still not converted to all uh, for now. Uh, we are working on that. All right. So uh, there was a question about. Um, classes and the fact that the components today, they are uh, JavaScript native classes. Mm -hmm. And in the old system, uh, they were objects that you could basically change the properties of. You, you could uh, include on those objects. Yeah, yes. There, it, it's slightly confusing because uh, in the widget uh, code, you, can, you could use basically two methods, uh, extend or include. Mm -hmm. Extend was the subclass, subclass system, and include is a uh, monkey patching system. And for uh, uh, with native class, you cannot monkey patch e as easily. So what we did is provide um, a so small uh, utility helper to help uh, everyone to monkey patch to, uh, any class that they want to. But I still uh, advise against that because uh, monkey patching is not the way we want to uh, provide um, a safe and solid robust code, right? So yeah. uh, in the future, we will uh, provide a lot of extension points and we will make sure that uh, it will be easier for uh, for the, the rest of the Odoo ecosystem to interact with the uh, web client uh, in a very uh, Profound system, in a very deep way. Just like, just like um, the web, sp the spreadsheet component is written outside of Odoo, but is uh, uh, used and modified inside Odoo itself. Yeah. So you used monkey patching, uh, and you said uh, monkey patching is not the way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, so does that mean that it should be avoided at all costs, or? Not at all cost. For now, at, anyway, there is a, a very high migration cost for now uh, to uh, escape from the widget system. And and if monkey patching something uh, help lower that cost, please just do it. I don't, I don't have any problem with that. But it's not a feature of a well-designed system in the long term. So you, you can still all the time do that. But uh, for uh, the stability of Odoo, what, what we want to... Uh, um, uh, to uh, use uh, is uh, standard, well, uh, well-defined extension point that we'll do, provide. Okay. Could you talk a bit about the patch method, which is the method used for mocking patching? So, how does it work, and what can you do now that you could not do before? Yeah. It, uh, you just cannot uh, uh, monkey patch a class uh, manually. Well, well, you can do it. It's basically just rewriting the prototype uh, system. Mm -hmm. And the, the monkey patch, the, the patch system is just there to help the transition from uh, the, the old old uh, old style code to the new system. Uh, I would, well, yes, that's it. Okay. Thank you very much. So there was a question about the events and how uh, events can go uh, from an old component to uh, Odoo widget and then back to an old component or like how do uh, custom events in all match with custom events in widgets in Odoo? Um, it's, a, it's a little bit difficult to uh, to go from one system to a different, right? And mm -hmm. we in, in uh, the widget system, we had two uh, event systems. We had the, those custom events and which were used for business Time. Like the trigger up events? Yes, that's right. Business ah. kind, uh, events. And you have, you had the standard DOM event. And what we decided to use in OWL is just a single, um, event system, a DOM event. And, and we can still use it to propagate, uh, business kind of event if necessary. Mm -hmm. But, uh, we have two systems for now. And this makes it more difficult because, uh, we, we have, we have different principles. Uh, if you, if you need to bubble up the components, or if you need to bubble up the DOM tree, right? It's a, a different kind of uh, property. And uh, we have, uh, I talked about that in this talk uh, in a few minutes ago. We have uh, those helpers that helps remap uh, from one system to a the two different one and to the next and so on. So it, it should work and we, we, we did it in some difficult, uh, pretty complicated situation, but I'm aware that uh, maybe something is uh, a miss, and in that case, uh, you may want to uh, to have a more specific question. All right. So I also saw that somebody asked, where can I find the old code? Is there an open repository that people can play with? 
Uh, the OWL code. Uh, okay, yeah. uh, let's talk about that. The OWL framework is an external library. It's uh, hosted on a GitHub uh, Odoo um, uh, repository. It's uh, GitHub slash Odoo slash OWL, simply. Mm -hmm. You can st also find it on uh, NPM. Uh, if you if you start a new project, you can simply do NPM install uh, at Odoo slash OWL. And it's a, it's a public uh, open source library, uh, just uh, just like that. And maybe you will be interested to find uh, the, um, the code for my previous talk, the one about um, uh, all all framework itself. Yeah. And you can find that on my personal uh, repository. It's, it's indicated in the talk. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, thank you very much, Jerry. Thanks again for explaining us um, how people will use all and all the widgets together. Thank you, Vincent, for uh, being here. Being here. Uh, I, I know that it's maybe a difficult topic and we don't have much time for to answer those questions. I'll be around today uh, uh, and then tomorrow again uh, in, those, in the framework JavaScript uh, room. You can also ask questions to my team. They are very good. Uh, so thank you for your attention. Thanks, everyone.